Hello, this is another Osaka League game uh, played on even where white won by uh, 10 points and a half after killing quite a large group on the right side but it seems that white turned into a very conservative and cautious player after the kill and sometimes it's better to play like this and win by a small margin than try to, to keep killing your opponent and collapse so let's see what could have been done better for both players so we see that black study with a uh, low Chinese Fuseki very good for white to approach uh, R14 the other options for white here uh, are a direct Sansan -San invasion of course and the Tsuke in the top left corner D16 this would be the modern ways to approach the Chinese Fuseki old school way is to play a move like D10 or approach the corner from the outside D13 usually white doesn't want to attack at E16 because black already has the pincer J17 in place so here white it's fine to give the shimari in the corner and extend on the side to set up a moyo that uh, was the way to play I don't know back in the 90s but nowadays yeah R14 is very common and the invasion so black defense calm uh, white can continue in the corner it's quite large to invade the sun sun actually because if white simply slides and extends back Black gets a pretty nice uh, Moyo in the top with the extension of J17. So White can go directly Sansan, -san, and the common variation nowadays is to turn, play Atari, keep Sente, and then attack White in the lower right corner. Or, of course, uh, the Sansan -san invasion after the Joseki. <clears throat> now, here White extended back Q11, that's fine. Uh, this is also kind of an old school way of playing. Uh, white can play the two space high shimari on the bottom and when black goes for a pincer then invade the corner anyway q11 is good uh, black approaches the corner that's fine too now here uh, white went for the territory variation uh, the pincer it's an option too and also simply came a q6 that works quite fine with the q11 stones so we can have this kind of follow-up then approach the top left corner probably d16 the aggressive way the pincer is fine to any kind of pincer n3 n4 m4 so for example if uh, m4 and black jumps out white jumps along black will probably jump again and then counter pincer but here white can counter pincer too <clears throat> this is also a, an old-fashioned joseki anyway nothing wrong with p3 keep the corner and uh, in this case when uh, white already has a stone at q11 white can consider stepping up to the fourth line at q6 also the kosum is an option and when black extends white can go keima to set up a nice moy on the right side but r6 is the classic joseki so nothing wrong with that either it's just good to think about uh, alternative moves like q5 or q6 <clears throat> black extends classic way to finish the joseki and white goes c6 uh, that's very conservative but it's a fine move normally on the bottom side it's good direction to play for white to play h3 because h3 is threatening the invasion at m3 so when white plays h3 many times black will play a one space jump to prevent the invasion and then white still has time to play c6 now when white goes c6 directly uh, black can extend g3 and this feels good for the bottom side but in the same time, uh, if you look all over the board, it's interesting for Black to play moves like a shoulder hit here and a one space jump, so he can work with the Moyo in the top. Therefore, uh, for White, it's uh, nice to play H3 once and then approach the top left corner. For example, this way, like the old school variation or attach right away, then <clears throat> depends on what Hane Black plays, White has this kind of follow up and then extend for a base. So setting up a moy on the left side now black has got the top side a lot of potential but the sun sun invasion is still open and a tiny group on the bottom side white has the left and the right so and comey of course we can say the game is pretty balanced so good fuseki for both so far <clears throat> uh black made a shimari in the top left that's pretty big too so black can think about this kind of move and then jump to towards the top in order to fix uh, i mean set up a box a moyo when um, black plays here he wants to extend around c10 so white can still play h3 threatening the invasion and if black jumps out white gets another extension of d11 
The thing is, uh, black might extend C10, which is ideal, and then if white comes inside, black will allow the connection under and jump out. So black can also accept this invasion at entry. Therefore, it's good for white to extend on the left side. That's a nice idea. But C10 feels a little bit uh, shy because the way uh, white should consider this extension, it's D11 or C11. Even if it leaves an invasion point, white can still make a base with a two space jump. And when it's high, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the thing is, when white plays a move like C10, anyway, there is an invasion point at C8. So that didn't completely uh, fix the, the left side. Besides, black can still extend C12. And C12 is pretty good distance from the Shimari. So black got this corner enclosure, an extension in the top and an extension on the left side. And this is quite ideal. But if white goes closer, uh, sorry, I mean like this, <clears throat> and black extends C13, that's a bit more narrow. It's much closer to the Shimari. And now I can get the other extension and then a jump in the center to protect against the invasion or a Kema like this. So when we go back to this shape, when black extends C12, later on black can still invade C8. Oh, black played a submarine approach. Actually, black just needs G3 and then think about D2 because when black plays G3 and white blocks E3, this is a center exchange for black and then black has time to extend on the left side which is pretty ideal uh, preparing the invasion at c8 white may jump to defend against the invasion then black can go for the right side either a jump like this to expand the moyo or invade right away r9 <clears throat> it's also good enough for black to play a move like s12 allow this extension on the right and then jump in the top now there's a big top side a pretty sizable bottom and left and right are not that huge after all so i think black has a, a bigger chance now anyway black slides white protects the corner black extends back uh, white can think about the kosumi like this and a one space jump because in this variation let's say we go like that black takes the corner <clears throat> white has a lot of potential on the outside and then extends again towards the top so even if white loses the points around the corner they will transfer into the middle later on. It's a good deal for white. So white keeps the territory in the corner instead in the actual game. Um, white can also bump, then block the corner with C2. Black will usually clamp once to see how white reacts, whether it's a C1 or C3. C3 is the proper move. Then black has to extend back to G3. Black is not going to play H3 because it leaves uh, some RG here. And when black plays G3, later on in the end game, White has the Han at D1 with the idea to play Nostis to GF2. So this B2 can be separated. And well, White doesn't have to rush with this D1 move. And when Black connects C1, White can ignore again. <clears throat> so for Black, it's not also not so interesting to play C1 too early. Uh, that stays there for uh, late middle game stage towards uh, end game. Anyway, this is proper to keep the corner. Later on, white has F2, pull back, cut, and capture the stone. So that's the local follow-up. But right now, white expands the right side. For what, it's actually very big to play C13. <clears throat> so limit the, the expansion in the top, and also the sun sun invasion in the top right. Uh, on the right side, if white wants to expand the moyo and limit uh, black's development on the bottom, uh, white should play a move like O7. That's a key point pretty much for both colors. And stay a little bit away from this thick formation. Because just playing a move like this still allows an approach here, for example, which threatens the invasion on the right. So white needs to protect the territory. Then black will attach in order to set up a big moyo. So in the end, this kind of jump just uh, ends up a neutral point. Uh, anyway, that's a very big point, C12. So as a Fuseki point, for white it's really large to play c13 so now black only has the shimari and one extension in the top and here there's still an invasion point actually there are several but uh, black is kind of limited in the top so for white is very big c13 for black it's big to extend c12 which he got it now white jumps again ah oh, yeah with this move white is looking for an invasion at around m3 but it still feels a bit big to invade the top right corner 
So black descends to make sure there is no invasion around M3. <clears throat> uh, that's a pretty okay way to defend because with this move he prepares the monkey jump. But now white can attach once to keep uh, black very low, then play a one space jump. So these two forcey moves will keep black on the third line, then invade the top right corner. So invade this area, that's also good. Then come out, fine, black defends the corner. Uh, yeah, this is a nice idea to connect the right side and set up a moyo. But white can extend towards the left with a cap move, threatening the invasion in the top here usually. Black will add another move to keep the territory safe, then extend on the right. Anyway, this move is good. Keeps connected to the right side. And black invades. Uh, this invasion is a bit too deep. Black can just play moves, for example, around this spot. Then think about an invasion. If white protects, uh, black can reduce from the right side. Everything is center here. Then black has the peep, the monkey jump. But for now, black shouldn't bother. Simply go out. There is also the cutting point around uh, N14 that can uh, bother. So white needs to protect around here. I think the game is still okay for black with the top left corner, top right being very large and the bottom quite consistent. It's gonna be a long game, but black has the first chance, I think. So here with this invasion, uh, it's a bit tricky. White can cap, then Kema and just kill the invasion. Actually, the way uh, white kill was good too. So Kosumi like this, surround everything. Yeah, very good to pull back. So it's difficult for black to make twice. Then hit the vital point. Yeah, white was uh, black was trying a monkey jump to connect. If uh, white plays Kosumi it's okay here, black will link on the wedge Atari, connect, then uh, connect like this. Oh, this will be a call. So Atari connect and connect here, Atari connect, Atari go down, push, turn, catch these stones. Uh, black can connect, but it's painful. So white found a better way. Uh, S13, it's the right move to keep uh, black disconnected. So when black pulls back, white sacrifices, that's fine. It's all forced Atari and connect. Very good. Now black was trying some Tesuji, but once white pushes here, there are no eyes anymore. So this is a key point. And anyway, if black plays um, this 2k, white will go up and it's only one eye. <clears throat> so in the end, the group will die. Now white killed the group. Uh, black protects here, but this is uh, Gote. White doesn't have to go up uh, with an empty triangle. Actually, well, it's empty triangle even if playing R16. But the thing is with R16, white, uh, black will uh, Atari, white connects. And now there are two cutting points. And black needs to connect at S17 or S18 to keep the two stones connected. So this way, uh, white will damage two more points compared to simply go up. Because now black connects and black saves these two points here. So that can matter. I mean, every point it's important. And of course, white played this move, even if it's not necessary. Uh, so for example, if white plays a cap here and black goes Atari, white plays this, Atari, white captures two stones. Okay, it feels bad to accept all those forcey moves. So it makes sense to play the wedge and prevent the Atari at R15. But R15 wouldn't kill white or save the group on the right side. But playing R16, it's a good way to prevent, especially that it's center and it destroys a, a few more points in the corner. Oops. So let's see what happened next. White connects, black connects, white jumps. Uh, this jump is good. It prevents uh, the invasion at C8. Well, black can still try, but white can cover. Or white will play, for example, uh, J4, forcing move. Then push with Kosumi, push again, Ane, uh, Atari. And when white connects here, he's trying to catch this stone on a large scale and make the box. So maybe black is not very encouraged to jump in. Yeah, black jumps uh, in the top to expand the Moyo. So here, um, why should think about some ways to, to damage the Moyo? A good pro move is to play D17. See whether uh, black connects like this or blocks this way or blocks the other way. 
So if black wants to keep the corner points, white can uh, use d17 as a sacrifice with an invasion around g17. When black captures a stone, white comes out and separates the top stone. So that's just bait using d17. Uh, also, for white is good enough to play a move like j15. Yeah, this cap to reduce, keep the right side. Actually, once white killed the right side, which is uh, absolutely for free, I mean, white just kept all the territory there and even made it bigger. Um, white is aware that he's uh, ahead and he doesn't need to push too much. So it's good to play like this. <clears throat> uh, the way to reduce here, it's actually a tsuke this way. <clears throat> If uh, black goes for a Hane, white can counter Hane. Then when black plays Atari, white goes up. Now when black connects here, white can Atari and capture the stone, which reduces a lot in Sente. Black needs another move here or here to prevent the call. And white got stronger in the center, then white can expand the middle this way. Now if uh, white uh, black captures the other stone, white can Atari. When black connects, white captures this guy. Atari under, take, and black needs another move to connect everything together, but it's mostly on the second line. Again, white is center and can expand the middle. So the idea with these forcing moves is to take center. Uh, when black extends to the right, white will play another forcing move, then play away. If uh, black extends to the left, uh, white can play a one space jump. Black will play no B or wedge, Atari connect, then leave the position as it is and expand the middle again. So this is a 4C move, same idea, then another one, that's fine too. Attach, Atari connect, and now white can leave the position as it is. If white plays a move like J4, which is fine too, because on this cut just sacrifice, uh, black can jump in. And if white plays in the center, somewhere around here, when uh, black goes Atari, white can connect, or even block an Atari, then Hane, and sacrifice a stone and still keep most of the middle. Uh, if k5, which is solid, black can still capture this stone and white needs to sacrifice. So it's more interesting to play j4 because when black I mean black captures a stone like this, at least white has a follow-up to push, push again and connect. So it protects all this line and later on white can also push j3 in center. Yeah, black comes inside a little bit. This game I was big. Keep the box, that's fine. Hane. Uh, but it's time to get inside uh, Black's center. So, I mean, black, Black's top area. With this push, Black will pull back and White can push here also. Like this, uh, White is too generous. I mean, this bump was supposed to be White at age 11. So, if bump and Black pulls back, White can connect here and still enclose a lot of the box. This feels good for white, uh, sorry, for black to step inside. This move is not necessary because you better enclose the center like that or push again in the top. <clears throat> so somehow black build a lot more than expected in the top left area. Uh, playing a move like this leaves cuts. So black can push and cut here. Then there's an Atari and capture. And now Atari and a net. So it's more interesting to play Kema. Or push again or play nothing in that area maybe Kosumi like this this Kosumi can be center for both or white can play the attach when black cuts sacrifice and get inside the the moyo so black will block white pulls back and now there's a clamp so black will play another move here to prevent the clamp otherwise if black pushes here white will clamp Atari push and damage more in center that's actually bigger than the few points in the center. Always focus on the sides, on the edges in the in the end game stage. This is good. This push is also very big. All fine. Monkey jump. But this monkey jump, uh, why doesn't have to play S2? S2, it's about five points capture when uh, Black takes, and in order to keep center, White can play here. Then white can play this Kosumi, white can also go uh, Kema in the top, push. When black captures like this, I mean just cuts in the corner, white Atari, black takes. So this is a 5 points damage, but it's got it for black. So white can continue with other moves 
and actually compensate for the five points loss. So this connection shouldn't be uh, a reflex. And many times it's okay to play S3, but luckily when the group is safe in the corner and you don't need I shape, you don't go for S2 right away. So this means the monkey jump was actually a little bit early for black. What black could do, uh, black can play P1 and when white goes S1, black doesn't connect because when black connects, this is not always center. So black can leave the position like this and then he goes Kosumi and plays other moves on the board like this. And if white captures, this is Gote. So white is not encouraged to play Q1 too early. And when white plays other moves, then black eventually connects in Sente, but a little later in the game. So the timing is always tricky here. Anyway, white connected right away because the mindset is that no matter what he plays, he wins the game. So keep it uh, steady. It's good to play one Atari here. Then if you connect or not, that's a different story, but it's actually quite big. This jump feels a little bit neutral. Okay, black had to connect, that's good. So in the end, not so many points in the center after all this center forcing moves. Ah, that's pretty small. But what else is big? I mean, if white plays here, black connects, Atari connects, so it's just a matter of two extra points. Ah, super conservative. Actually here, if white wants to play another move, it's better to play this one. So when black pushes, white protects on Atari connect, so you also save the M4 stone. This one, black can still capture a stone later. So it was extremely conservative. Probably just to show black that he has no chance. And well, in this kind of games, one should always count to see whether he's ahead or behind and then play accordingly. Uh, instead of this move, better protect here. Because anyway, at the end, after all the neutral points are filled, you need a move at uh, B3 or B4. So when black goes Atari, just go out, Atari, go out, Atari, go out, Atari, go out, Atari, connect. And that's it. So the stones are captured. Playing here, after all the neutral points are filled, you also need this move, so it's one point less. I mean, with b4, you can uh, defend against both weaknesses in one move. <coughs> so that was it. Huh? Killing the right side, good enough to win this game. Well done, and don't play too soft next time.